okay so welcome back to our next class as far as today's topic is concerned today we are going to start with the concept of the force system uh, resultant okay so our chapter for today will be the concept of this force system resultant as far as mechanical systems are concerned or your day to day experiences are concerned you must have seen that uh, there are some machine elements or some uh, objects uh, which work on account of the application of the force that there are some objects we apply force over them but the type of motion that the objects have is along an axis which is quite different from the line of action of the force that is if you look at this example we are having this object which is called the wrench okay this is what you call as a wrench so if you focus on this wrench or what you must have seen uh, in your day to day experiences that this wrench is used uh, for uh, opening or closing the screws okay it's used for closing or opening the screws look at the way the force is being applied on this wrench the force is being applied in this direction or we say this is the line of action of the force the line of action of the force is this direction but what motion does it cause it causes the rotation of this it causes the rotary motion or rotational motion of this screw or rotational motion of this uh, you know uh, nut bolts okay nuts or bolts so what essentially has happened the line of action of the force is this but the effect of this force is somewhere else okay the effect of this force which is being applied in this direction the line of action of this force is this but this force is causing the rotation and the rotation is about the z axis okay this is the axis about which by right hand screw rule you curl your fingers okay when you have to uh, see the direction of the rotation you have to curl your right hand fingers in the direction of the rotation since this force will try to rotate this assembly in this direction okay this will be the direction this will be the direction of the rotation in which the rotation will take place okay if you curl your fingers in this direction the thumb will be upwards so we say the force has created the effect uh, on this uh, screw and the effect is along which axis the effect is along z axis okay and we know from our earlier classes on basic physics that we call this type of motion as a rotational motion so the force has created uh, the effect force has created the turning of the body this force is responsible for turning this object about the z axis okay the capacity of the force the tendency of the force to rotate the body about a given axis we call that as we say that this force has applied what you call as torque we say the force has applied torque okay this is in this this is what we will call the force system resultant okay so the first force system resultant that we will be studying is what you call as torque okay so this is the resultant of a force system here you have only one force and the effect of this force is that the force is causing rotary motion okay or rotational motion in an object and rotational motion is not possible as long as we will not ha be having a resultant of the force what's actually called the torque as far as the definition of the torque is concerned see this is very very important for example let's consider let's say this is our x axis this definition should be you know well established in your minds because this is very important let's suppose this is our y axis okay so we are we are treating this to be our y axis this is our y axis and we are treating this axis to be our x axis okay let's suppose the origin of this xy system is here this is the origin of this xy system let's suppose we have a point p okay let's suppose we have a point p in this xy system and this point p is having a radius vector r from point o okay the radius vector of this point p from point o is say for example r okay let's suppose that this point p is subjected to force f in this direction let's say this force is f okay so we have a point p in xy system such that the position coordinate of this point p is r and this point p is subjected to force f then we say we define mathematically that this force is creating torque on this particle about an axis passing through point o i am repeating we say that this force f which is acting on a particle at point p 
having radius vector r in the xy system we say that this force produces torque about an axis passing through point o okay about an axis about an axis passing through point o because when you take the front view of that axis the axis will essentially be like this and in the front view that axis will be in the form of a point okay so the the torque which is produced by force f about an axis passing through point o is defined as torque tau it's a vector is defined as the cross product between the position vector r and f so please and please remember this definition torque is equal to r cross f okay so torque is the cross product between the position vector and the force so whenever a force f acts on a particle or acts on a body okay then the force produces torque about an axis point o from where from where the from where we are actually measuring the position of this particle uh, position of the point p that's position vector r the torque produced by force f is equal to the cross product between r and f it's called r cross f and we know as far as this r cross f is concerned this can be written as magnitude of r multiplied by magnitude of f multiplied by the sine of the smallest angle the sine of the smallest angle between r and f please and please remember the value, remember the definition of this theta this is the sine of the smallest angle between r and f that's we will get to know what do we mean by the smallest angle between r and f so the cross product is defined as r cross f magnitude of r magnitude of f sine of smallest angle between r and f since this is a vector quantity the cross product between two vectors produces a vector so the direction is written by n cap okay such that n cap is a vector which is perpendicular to the plane containing r and f this is very very important so as far as the definition of torque is concerned we define torque as torque is equal to r cross f and this is equal to magnitude of r multiplied by magnitude of f and sine of smallest angle between r and f this is the magnitude of the cross product this is the magnitude of this torque okay mm -hmm. this magnitude of the torque is also written as m which is which you call as moment okay this is called moment since this moment is being measured this moment is being measured about an axis passing through point o we write this as m subscript o this is moment of this force about an axis passing through point o we write this as m subscript o we say this is moment about point o okay the magnitude of torque we call that as moment now look at this vector as far as this vector is concerned we say this is n cap it's in the in fact this is not uh, called as n cap this is called as neta cap okay this is a greek letter neta the neta vector represents a vector it is a unit vector okay its magnitude is 1 this is a unit vector this is a unit vector its magnitude is 1 unit vector in a direction unit vector in a direction unit vector in a direction perpendicular to the plane containing r and f so neta is a unit vector in a plane containing r and f okay now first of all we have to define two important things first let me tell you about this sin theta okay what is this theta theta i told you it is the smallest angle between r and f okay as far as the smallest angle between r and f is concerned look at the position vector r and look at the force f at point p where you are actually drawing your position vector the tail of the head of r vector is meeting with the tail of f vector okay in order to measure the value in order to measure in order to see what do we mean by this theta what we have to first of all do what we will be doing first will be first of all will be first of all bringing both these vectors r vector and f vector at the common terminus what do we mean by common terminus common terminus we mean to say is that if we predict we have to you know at one point this r and f we have to get them at the common uh, you know where their tails are actually meeting so what we do let's produce this r, r in the same direction as it's acting having same magnitude as it has that is if we produce this r in the forward direction while maintaining its magnitude we do not change the magnitude we maintain the magnitude of r but we move this r parallel to itself okay keeping the same magnitude at his head and we know 
as a vector is moved parallel to itself with the same magnitude, the properties of the vector do not change. What we are doing, we are simply moving this vector from this position to this position, okay? So what we do, we move this vector forward in the same direction, maintaining the same magnitude. The properties of the vector do not change. Now, so now we have somehow got these vectors on the same point, same terminal. This is the point P where the tail of this vector and tail of this vector are meeting, okay? Previously, this was not the case. Previously, the head of this vector was meeting with the tail of this vector, but we maintained the properties of this vector. We move this forward. Now, as we define the torque, torque we defined as the cross product between R and F. Okay. Now, this sine theta, I said this is the smallest angle between R and F. So, what we do, smallest angle between R and F, that means move from R to F. We have to move from R to F through the smallest angle. See, we can move from vector R to vector F in this direction. This is one direction. So once we are moving from R to F in this direction, we are describing this much amount of angle. Or we can move from R to F in this direction. Okay. So we are, de we are defining or we have to describe this much amount of angle. So what we are actually doing as you move from R to F, you will be moving from R to F through this small angle. Or in order to move from R to F, we may be moving in this direction. Now, which of the two directions is the smallest? In order to move from R to F, is this angle smaller angle or is this angle smaller? I think in order to move from R to F, it's clear that this angle is smaller. So we'll be calling this angle as angle theta. Angle theta here is the smallest angle between R and F. As you move from R to F, you may be moving in this direction or you may be moving in this direction. The smallest angle is the angle which is measured in this direction. And you know, this direction is the clockwise direction. This is the clockwise direction, okay? So we say the torque that is being measured, its magnitude is magnitude of R, magnitude of F, and the sine of smallest angle between R and F. The sine of smallest angle between R and F is the sine. Uh, is, is the angle theta, okay? So you have to be very careful while we are measuring this theta, number one. Number two is, what is, the, what is the tendency of this force? We said the tendency of the force is that it creates torque. Now, whether this force will move this particle in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, that depends upon the direction of this torque. Look, as you move from R to F through the smallest angle, you are moving in which direction? you are moving in the clockwise direction, okay? So we say that the direction of the stock is clockwise, okay? So we say the direction of the stock is clockwise. So clockwise direction, we have obtained the direction of the stock because it's quite evident that this for this, as you move from R to F, you have to move in which direction? In the clockwise direction, that gives the direction of your, that gives the magnitude of your smallest angle between R and F, that is theta. So this direction being the clockwise direction, we have to say that this torque is clockwise. And as per the sign conventions available, the torque which is being measured clockwise is taken as negative. This is your choice. The torque which is produced clockwise, you can take that positive as well. So this is totally your choice. So in our uh, overall journey, what we'll be taking, we'll be taking the torque which is applied clockwise, we'll be taking that torque as negative. And the torque which is produced anti-clockwise, we'll be taking that torque as anti-clockwise torque, we'll be taking as anti-clockwise torque, we'll be taking as positive. These are our sign conventions, though you are free enough to change it. You are free enough to say that clockwise torque, let, let's take that as positive and anti-clockwise torque, let's take that as negative. Okay, this is your choice. Okay, but what uh, we will be doing what uh, sign convention will be following in our overall course. We'll be taking clockwise talk as negative, okay, and anti clockwise talk will be taking as positive. This will be our overall journey. Now, again, return back to this equation. So, we have from this equation, talk is equal. Let's draw this equation somewhere here. So, we have talk is equal to the talk is equal to R F magnitude of R magnitude of F. And the sine of and the sine of smallest angle between R and F. Okay, and the sine of smallest angle between R and F. That was angle theta in a direction perpendicular to the plane containing R and F. Now look here. The magnitude of this torque. The magnitude of this torque is we can write the magnitude of the torque is equal to the magnitude of the torque is R F sine R F sine 
theta okay so when you are writing the magnitude you don't actually write this direction so this is rf sin theta so we can also write this rf sin theta as we can write this rf sin theta as we can write it like this now this rf sin theta can be written as we can write it this rf sin theta can be written as this is equal this is f multiplied by this is simple multiplication this is r sin theta okay this we can write like this this is r multiplied f multiplied by r sin theta now look at this diagram if you look at this diagram if you look at this diagram in this diagram as far as this is concerned this is our r okay now this line and this line are parallel lines so this is a transverse therefore this angle has to be theta as well because this angle and this angle they are corresponding angles now draw a perpendicular from draw a perpendicular like this okay now as we are drawing this perpendicular this is our r as far as this base is concerned this base will be as far as this base is concerned now this base for us will be this base will be this base will be r cos theta we know it okay and as far as this perpendicular is concerned this perpendicular will be r sin theta okay so this perpendicular represents r sin theta now look at this r sin theta this r sin theta represents what it represents the perpendicular distance this is the perpendicular distance this represents the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force this is the line of action of the force and you produce it back you see this is the line of action of your force okay so this perpendicular distance this r sin theta this is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the axis about which you are measuring this torque we are measuring torque about an axis passing through point o the perpendicular distance between the axis passing through point o and the line of action of the force is this distance what what we are calling as this distance what we are calling as the distance which we are calling as r sin theta okay so distance we are calling as r sin theta this perpendicular distance r sin theta is also represented by small d okay so we write this as magnitude of torque is equal to f multiplied by r sin theta which is equal d and this d is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the and the axis about which torque is being measured you know this perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the axis about which the torque is being measured this is called force arm so this is what we call as this is called force arm okay so this is our force arm so we say the torque is equal the magnitude of the torque the magnitude of the torque the magnitude of the torque is force into force arm what is also called as moment about point o because we are measuring this moment about an axis passing through point o so we say moment about point o is equal to force into force arm so this is the first introduction to the force system resultants okay so this is what this diagram actually states the diagram states that this is what the diagram states okay so this is how we measure the torque okay now this we have also discussed here the direction we have also discussed now let's go to few problems about uh, you know let's solve these simple simple problems then rest of the problems you can easily solve now look at the problems the problem says like uh, the first problem let's take this problem for each case shown in figure 4.4 so we have we, this is our figure 4.4 okay we have case a we have case b we have case c so on and so forth so what we have been asked uh, determine the moment of the force about point o so in all the cases you find that here the force has been applied the force has been applied the force is being applied and we have to find how much is the moment of this force about point o okay we know now the moment whenever we have to find the moment about point o or about any point we should first of all find out the force and we should multiply this force with the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the axis about which we are measuring this uh, we have to measure this uh, moment okay say for example in case a we have to measure the moment about point o so the axis will be passing through point o okay so as the axis is passing through point o okay so the point axis is passing through point o so the perpendicular distance 
this is the force which is acting on this uh, bar okay so perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force which is this direction and the axis about which the moment is being measured that is point 0 okay what is the perpendicular distance between the two the perpendicular distance between the two is 2 meter therefore how much will be the moment equal that is force that is 100 newton multiplied by multiplied by the 2 meter okay that's equal 100 into 2 it is 200 newton meter so 200 newton meter is nothing it is simply the moment which is acting on this bar about an axis passing through point o and look at this uh, you can physically ve verify what is this force trying to do this force is trying to move this bar in which direction it is trying if as the, as the force is being applied this bar will bend downwards okay so this bar will you know bend like this okay so this bar has described some angle and this angle has been described in which direction the angular motion is in which direction the angular motion is in clockwise direction so we say this moment is clockwise we will show the clockwise direction if if you don't show the direction then simply write negative okay because we are taking this as because taking clockwise moment as negative this is the first problem let's solve few more problems okay i hope you can solve problem two yourself solve this problem yourself i will show you problem c okay